All right, this is uh, really cool because this video is staged and not staged. It's staged to the point where I was going through some of my stuff and underneath my printer here, um, I know what's in this box, but I haven't opened it yet because I've had this for many, many years. Um, but news is slow right now, so we're gonna check it out. This is awesome. This is so cool. I had, when I was in high school, which was uh, 12 years ago, I had a huge obsession with phones and not the phones that we all know, like the Asus uh, Zenfone and smartphones and all that. This was what was, um, this is what we were all using, at least in my high school in Vancouver, because we had a very large Asian influence and everyone was kind of going nuts for these. This right here is actually a phone that I got from Japan, you'll see right there, in uh, 2006. Now, like I said, this video is kind of staged because I know what's in here, but I haven't seen it for like seven years. I forgot about this. Yes! Oh my god! Oh my god! So, <laughs> these are all my... What the hell is this? These are all my... Oh, that was a map my friend drew in... Um, high school for me. These are all my Japanese phones or Keitais, uh, they're, they're called, which is mobile device. So they are cool flip phones like this and they, they're all super, super unique. I mean, these all came out in like 2003, 2004, 2005 kind of thing. Oh my God, look at this. Look at this one. I remember this one. This is an old Nokia. I don't, I would, I have no idea what the model number is on this one, I forget. This is an old Nokia phone. It is a phone. You actually go like that to answer it. Here's the earpiece right there. And uh, the talk piece is on the bottom right there. These are so dusty. And you have a 3.5 mil headphone jack and you have a port to charge it. And there's the little Nokia tag on the side. This one was really cool because what you do, there's no way this has power. No, the screen might even be dead. What you do is this is the enter button and then you have some toggle buttons here, call, uh, whatnot. And you would cycle through uh, like like little carousels of words. So if you want to type, you would go like P, E, T, you know what I mean? So that's cool. And to end a call, you'd be like, okay, cool, see ya. And you'd go like that. That was so awesome. And you can see there's a full SIM card slot right there. I'm not gonna go through every one of these or should I? These are super cool. Uh, this one is the Sony Ericsson W850i or something. These all still have batteries and everything. This is awesome. I haven't seen these forever. Recently I started listing some stuff on eBay, so I was going around our storage room and uh, I found all these gems. I'm going to put these cables aside. If you want to see what the cables look like, they used to look like that for the Japanese phones. I got into Japanese phones because, like I said, we have a very large uh, Asian culture on the west coast here. And these were all for sale, like, all over the place back in the day. This is cool. This is when I was an anime nerd. I haven't really watched anime in many years, but this, if uh, any of you guys know, I'll give you a second to guess. Okay, some of you are right, some of you are wrong. This is the... P905 something. This was the Final Fantasy phone that Cloud used in uh, Final Fantasy 7 Advent Children. And this is the one that uh, he... Oh, there it is. The P900 IV. That's it. And what you would do is... Um, uh, you'd, you'd, it, it would it'd be preloaded with all the Final Fantasy stuff. This actually came with Final Fantasy 1 built into it as a game. Yes, it did. And it's full like movie recording back in the day. Obviously, it's only a 2 megapixel. And it had optical zoom. Didn't actually have an... Um, sorry, it had digital zoom. It didn't even have an optical zoom. Or I guess it did here. It had a little optical zoom. And it used a uh, mini SD card. This thing was awesome, though. You just record like that. And then you could like zoom and stuff like that. This was really cool. This was an awesome phone. I even have the dusty cradle. This was all offered by Docomo back in the day. So I'm just going to put the ones we looked at over here. You guys can skip over this vid. Obviously, it has nothing to do with e-readers. But uh, this one was really cool. This is the, oh man, 920SH by, so yeah, 920SH by SoftBank. This one I used for a little while. It's, uh, I think, yeah, it was pink, but it's technically rose copper or something. This one is really cool. It had TV and not TV like one seg. So one seg is a service you actually need to use only in Japan. This one had a UHF transmitter in it. So you could watch TV over the air here and you could like set it on your, 
uh, table or something and swivel the phone or if something's, you know, a call comes in, you're just like, hey, what's up, man? This is not for the cell phone reception. This is for the UHF reception. So you can actually watch TV. Uh, 3.2 megapixel camera and a whopping 800 milliamp battery. So that's uh, that was really cool. The coolest thing about all these phones is that you could use them in Canada and America if you had a HyperSIM. And um, a HyperSIM, love this phone. A HyperSIM is right here in the box. So this was for my 9130C phone. A uh, HyperSIM is something really, really thin that you chop the corner of your SIM card off. You can see right there. You chop the corner of your actual SIM card and you put this like paper thin SIM card in between your SIM card and the actual phone. And it tricks your phone into receiving bands that are not normally uh, receivable by your phone. So um, yeah, this was really cool. It's called a HyperSIM and... Uh, this was all the craze back in 06, 07. I mean, this was like big stuff, man. This one is the uh, Vodafone. I have no idea. Oh, this is the, the box it came in, the V604SH. This one as well did a full swivel. It allowed you to uh, use a UHF transmitter just like the other phone. Look how bulky they were, huh? But these are so cool. They're way ahead of its time in Japan. For example, uh, this is one that came out in 2006. It already had a 5 megapixel camera, full waterproofing, and a uh, um, what we all know in now, like fingerprint sensors. We were like, wow, this is cutting edge. Well, they did it over like 11 years ago in Japan. So this one was really nice as well. This one is an F01A by Docomo. This one had a full touch screen, actually. And you can see that you have rubber around the seals here, so it's waterproof. And you have a little lock thing oh geez you have a battery door that's right and there's the battery and you can put your micro sd card in there and your um your sim card and the beauty about these is that back in the day they were actually made in japan all the phones i mean now everything's made in china which isn't exactly a bad thing but there's such a negative connotation with things made in china because such a reputation of making you know things that are fake things that like break and stuff like that yeah this was really nice like this phone was great. I love this one. It was really long. It's really sleek. And this is when they started getting a little bit thinner. You can see 2004, 5, 2006, 7, they started getting thinner. These are really fun toys. And everyone is always like, how do you use that in Canada? I'm like, HyperSim, yo. Anyways, this one, uh, I don't remember the model names. I'm going to have to cheat. Uh, should be written somewhere. This is the 931SH. This was really cool. Full touch screen. Uh, when you answer a call, you're just like, BAM! And you're like, what's up? And then after you're done, you're like, boom! And uh, people were really amazed with these because everyone back in the day had these. Like, you know, Sony phones, two megapixel cameras or whatever. And they're like, hey guys. And I'm all like here with my phone, like, hey man, what's up? You see how my voice was cooler. Uh, this is really cool. This one did not have this one had an antenna as well But this one didn't have a UHF transmitter So you actually had to be in Japan in order to watch TV on it But uh, they all had stuff back in the day like you'll see here They all had their Yahoo button Yahoo was really big in Japan in that that kind of time frame This one actually was a Chinese or Taiwanese ripoff of smartphone of the sharp phones that had all the North American bands already made in it. it says Sharp on it, but uh, I'm thinking this one wasn't. Correct me if I'm wrong. If you guys know anything about that, but that I, I remember it's it 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 having the North American bands. I think it was like a, a knockoff of the ones that you actually needed to use a HyperSIM for and all that. There are these little polka dotty type things on all the Japanese phones on the batteries and stuff too. You'll notice right there, right there, and right there. It was to tell you whether there was water damage on the phone or not, uh, either on the battery or the it, the water sep seeped through the casing into the actual phone itself. Um, that was really cool because it, uh, you know, when you're looking at a phone, if someone's selling it, you'd be like, oh, water damage, yo. And then the guy's like, no way, and he tried to scam you or whatever. This is really cool. This one is the Sharp. Oh, I saw it a second ago. Where was it? Oh, it was on the back. Yeah, Sharp 9013H, SH, whatever. Once again, this one had the swivel th um, screen where you could set it down like that. Uh, this one. Here's my last one in this box. Oh, actually, there's one more here. So, two more if you guys want to watch this. This is the Aquas Shot. Eh, wiping off the dirt. 
Aquashots 933SH. This one had a screen on the outside. You can see fully, uh, fully reflectable there on the outside. Hey guys. And this one had like designs and stuff on the outside. This also had an antenna. I'm not sure if this one you could actually watch the TV um, uh, broadcast service. This one uh, still has a Yahoo. They had like manner mode and all those cool buttons. There's no way this has battery. No, this is like caked in dust. You had a headphone jack right here, a proprietary cable, of course, that had to do with the uh, the smartphone line back then. And you had a really cool camera and a flash. I'm not sure if this one was waterproof or not. Uh, it doesn't look like it, no. And this one has a 710 milliamp battery. I mean, obviously they weren't as uh, demanding as they are nowadays. 2009, this one came out, dang. Yeah, I think I still use these up until 2010, realistically. Oops, I didn't put that on right. Don't wreck them. Uh, this one's really cool. Yeah, this one, this is the last one I'll show you guys. I don't keep you, keep you wait and keep you bored. So this one uh, had all, the, this is when like smartphone, slate smartphone uh, were coming out in, or I guess bar smartphones were coming out in uh, Japan. Let's wipe this off. We have a cradle here too, where you could actually put that on like that. And then set it on your uh, your tabletop and watch TV. They're really heavy on TV on the go in Japan back in uh, the two early early to mid two thousands. And uh, yeah, this thing was really cool because it's just a slate phone. This is fully waterproof, and this had a three D screen like the three DS, so you could actually watch stereo stereoscopic three D on this uh, without any use of glasses or anything like that. I remember I threw a screen protector on this to keep it nice and safe. So you have a micro USB. That's the first time they've used micro USB on any of these guys here, you see. And uh, this is the 102 SH2. And you can see this is totally waterproof. They have rubber seals here and around the side here. And their batteries are upgraded to a 1500 milliamp battery. To give you some perspective, this is the Asus Zenfone 3. You'll see how... Uh, Zenfone 3 Zoom, sorry, oh, uh, this one has a 5,000 milliamp battery, this has a 1,500, so you can see how much longer that lasts. This is really cool, you didn't need a hyper sim, those uh, funny looking sim cards to make it work, you just put in a micro, uh, mini sim card in there, no, micro, not nano, put a micro. And yeah, this was really cool, this is, this is so awesome because I was looking at that box, and I'm like, I knew what was in there, and I just had to show you guys, because I was such a nerd with these phones back in the day. And as you saw, I would always constantly upgrade. Uh, I think Howard Forums was where I got most of these phones off people, PayPal'd them and picked them up that way. So this is just something I wanted to show you guys. It was super cool. I mean, news is slow right now. And this is, you know, super, this was the high end of devices back in uh, uh, mid to late 2000s, man. Um, this is awesome. You know what? I'm going to sell some of these on eBay. I'll tra I what I'll do is I'll put my link to the eBay um, account, uh, the eBay listings down below and you guys can check these out. So that's about it, guys. Yeah, if you guys want any of these, I'm going to sell them because I'm going to free up some space. And uh, for goodyreader.com, this is Peter.